Welcome to the first ever New Jersey Vote 16 Youth Summit. Give yourself a round of applause for coming out here on a Saturday morning. Well, my name is Asada Mann, and I am a senior community organizer at the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice, and I have the unique pleasure of being your MC for today. Hope you don't get tired of my voice. Um, it's good to see you all here today. We've been looking forward to this day and planning it for a while, and we're just so thrilled to see so many of you here, so many passionate young leaders, advocates, and supporters. I just wanna start off by saying that, contrary to popular belief, this summit is actually not only about lowering the voting age. It's about so much more. It's about building real youth power. And we're here today because we believe that young people deserve a voice in our democracy, but especially in the decisions that affect their daily lives. And whether it's what they learn, gun safety, climate change, the ability to control your own body, learn your history, or so much more, young people are at the forefront of our movements and they have a direct stake in who runs our school boards and municipalities. And so they should obviously have a vote. Allowing 16 and 17 year olds to vote in school board elections won't only give young people that much needed voice, but it will also strengthen our democracy. A democracy that includes the voices of young people is more inclusive, representative, and dynamic. And we believe New Jersey and all of its municipalities should follow Newark's lead in lowering the voting age to school board elections. So together, we're going to be exploring how to make that a reality and how to ensure that young people have the tools that they need to advocate for voting rights now and in the future. So a little bit about today and why we're here, what the goal is. Today, our goal is to learn, strategize, and build connections together so that we can grow a movement to advocate for Vote 16 legislation across the state. Why? Because we recognize a very simple truth. Young people aren't just the leaders of tomorrow, they're the leaders of right here and right now. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, I can get a little better than that, right? I can't, we all here Saturday morning. Good morning, everyone. So uh, again, as mentioned, I'm a Craig Drinker. I'm the executive officer of the Victoria Foundation. We're a proud sponsor of this event. Uh, my staff had pulled together some notes for me to say, but before I try to jump into those, I gotta just say, I am so excited and proud to be in this room and it just reaffirms my belief that I believe in young people. I believe in young people, that young people are, are gonna be driving this work, as, someone, as she said earlier, not just in the future, I'm talking about today. So give yourselves a round of applause for being here today. So again, we, we, you know, we're, we're happy to be here. We want to thank uh, all the people who helped plan this out, the staff from uh, the, the Institute for Social Justice and all the partners. Uh, we support this platform for young people to expand their power and determine in their future for themselves, for their families, and for their communities. And this is why we wanted to support this summit. Voting is and has always been important. And as we know, in this current political climate, is more critical than ever that we lift up our votes because voting lifts up communities. The young people in this room today, we know you want to be a part of the decision making, what happens in your community, and we know you are passionate about casting your votes that not only affect your life, but those of your neighbors and those around you. Um, your powerful work and important work today really aligns with our mission at the foundation. At Victoria Foundation, we believe in the power of young people like you so much that we have a new strategy area dedicated to his work called Youth Self-Determination. And we have been and we will continue to invest millions of dollars into this work to focus on youth expression, youth organizing, and youth leadership. Mr. Haygood, I don't think they heard when I said we, Victoria is gonna to continue to pour millions of dollars into youth programming for young people, for youth organizing, youth power, and youth leadership. This is, what we, this is what we're talking about doing at Victoria Foundation. And we've been doing this since our, since our inception almost 100 years ago. So we understand the power of putting, investing in um, programs like yours and others really can really change the, the future of our community. Um, 
two of the organizations that we fund here in Newark, this, this two, the Institute, as well as I believe someone may be here from the Gym Project, they were instrumental in helping getting the legislation passed earlier this year that allowed the 16-year-olds here in the city of Newark to vote in local school board elections. Let's give them a round of applause. That triumph, that triumph sparked the development of this summer that you're sitting in today. So the goal was to give young people the right to vote in local elections everywhere in New Jersey, not just Newark. So big things are happening here in Newark. Change is happening in this city, and that begins with the youth, but it's also happening across this state. Uh, so we are proud to be bold champions of the strategy to promote youth self-determination. You have a great day of organizing, learning, and networking, and we hope to see you at the polls. Have a good day. All right, give it up for Craig one more time. All right, thank you, thank you. Okay, so next I have the pleasure of introducing Nakifa Bernard, Senior Program Director at the Cornwall Center. The Cornwall Center serves as a convening hub for area stakeholders and institutions, supporting workshops, lectures, talks, and symposia, just like the one we're having today. The Cornwall Center strives to be a neutral ground where people of disparate views and interests can come together around questions of mutual interest. So let's give a warm welcome to, to Nakifa. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I actually forgot my glasses at home, but these are prescription, so please pardon the shades while I deliver these remarks. <laughs> and let me welcome you. Let me, <laughs> cool, yeah, cool is definitely how I'm looking right now, I think. Welcome to Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey. My name is Nakifa Celicia Bernard. Oh, and my screen timed out. My apologies. <laughs> my name is Nakifa Salisi Bernard, and I am a senior program director at the Joseph C. Cornwall Center for Metropolitan Studies. On behalf of our director, Dr. Charles M. Payne, and the entire team at the Cornwall Center, it is my honor to welcome you to the Rutgers University Newark campus. You might be wondering, what is the Cornwall Center? for Metropolitan Studies. Well, working with partners, residents, and other stakeholders, we bring the intellectual talent and other resources of Rutgers to the challenges faced in New Jersey's urban communities. We design and, ex and execute qualitative and quantitative research. We produce publications, seminars, workshops, and my favorite part about working at Cornwall is we incubate projects that translate research into effective practice on the ground like our Parent Mentorship Academy and our summer New Arc Freedom School at 13th Avenue School here in Newark, New Jersey. Our work focuses mainly on education equity and community development, which is why we were so keen to be a sponsor for this Vote 16 Youth Summit. As a community development and civic studies scholar and practitioner, I would be remiss if I failed to share some evidence with you on why this Vote 16 initiative and your vibrant peer network here today are so important. As you may already be aware, scholars have documented a concerning decline in political participation in the United States over the last few decades, especially voter turnout. In Robert Putnam's landmark work, Bowling Alone, he provides statistical evidence of America's declining civic participation and social capital. His research demonstrates that over the last few generations, not only has Americans' political participation declined in several measures, such as voting, attendance at public meetings, attendance at political rallies, but it's also declined in non-political terms, such as memberships in bowling leagues and parent-teacher associations. A main takeaway from this work is that the health and vibrance of our communities and democracy have suffered due to this decline. Still, again, this isn't just about voting, but about being actively engaged in our communities and building valuable networks of relationships of reciprocity and trust. This summit and the Vote 16 initiative are real-time examples of how we can take action to address the challenges documented in Robert Putnam's study. Not only are you seizing your voting power at a time when many have abandoned it, but you're connecting with peers, leaders, and organizations in the process, which builds relationships and networks we need in the weeks, months, and years ahead. Young people making demands of our power structure is exciting stuff. Keep demanding, keep connecting, 
keep voting. Thank you. All right, thank you. Give it up for Nakifa one more time. Very nice, very nice. All right, next I wanna bring someone to the stage who you all clearly know because he got a round of applause already. Um, but I wanna invite our CEO and President Ryan Haga to the stage to share a few words. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, you all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is um, it's so gratifying to, to see you all, uh, young people in this room. There, there is a thing that happens when you get a bit older um, for young people. Older folks tend to have a, a skeptical view about young people. They say such things as, these young folks just don't care about much. All they care about is social media, TikTok and Twitter and various Instagram and other things. And what I love about this moment is that you all, it is Saturday morning. You all got here before nine o'clock. And so I'm gonna ask you to do something that's unprecedented, but I'm gonna ask you all to stand and give yourselves a round of applause. But it's gotta require, so I need you all from your seats, it's taking a minute. We're gonna get there. I'm looking at my teenagers, Trayvon and Serrano, but I need you to stand. Don't applaud yet, because this has gotta be real. We need some energy in the room. You're standing. The reason you're standing is because in a minute, you're gonna give yourselves a standing ovation. We, we live in a world where too often we don't celebrate our young people. And the reality is that you are not, as Asada said, just the future, you are now. When this ordinance was moving through the city hall, there was an older person who jumped ahead of the young people who were gonna testify. And she took the mic first and she said something like, these young people wanna lower the voting age, first they have to learn how to read. Out, yes, out loud. Then she went on to say something like, young people are not responsible enough to vote right now. And then our guy, Nate. Nate, raise your hand. Yeah. Nate. Nate was the first in a long line of young people who would testify in support of this ordinance. And Nate said something like this. He said, in the last school board election, just 2.5% of Newarkers voted. 2.5% of Newarkers voted. And then Nate went on, I think in one of the most cold-blooded moments I had seen, he went on to say, given that just 2.5% of people voted in the last school board election, he looked to the person who spoke first and said, respectfully, it's clear that we can't wait on other people to speak for us. And so I wanna say in this moment, listen, last thing I'll say, in the April 2025 Newark School Board election, you, you have one assignment, and that is to make sure that you organize with other young people to ensure that the turnout of young people alone surpasses 2.5%. So I wanna ask you to clap up in a way that you know you'll achieve that goal right now. So give yourselves a round of applause. Keep going, keep going like you really, really mean it. Give yourselves a round of applause. I appreciate y'all, that's the goal. Surpassing 2.5%, God bless you, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Give it up for Ryan again. All right, so as I'm pretty sure most of you know already, and as Ryan just alluded to, on January 10th of this year, the city of Newark, oops, excuse me, silence your cell phone, guys. All right, so on January 10th of this year, the city of Newark made history. 
That's the day it became the first city in New Jersey to lower the voting age to 16 for school board elections, and it became the second largest city in the entire country to do so. Yeah, Newark will go on to be a model for other cities and for other states. But that would not have been possible, and it would not have happened without the leadership and vision of then city council president, and now U.S. Representative LaMonica McIver. Yes, yes. Congresswoman MacGyver was a steadfast supporter of Newark's new ordinance. She cares deeply about her city, and she understands that its young people deserve a voice in who represents them in office, especially at, in school boards. Congresswoman MacGyver shepherded the ordinance through the council, and after powerful testimony from young people, it passed by unanimous vote. We were proud of, of Congresswoman MacGyver that day, we are proud to see her go on to become a U.S. representative of the 10th Congressional District, I believe only the second black woman in the state of New Jersey to, rep to represent um, New Jersey in Congress. And now we're proud to have her join us today to share a few words. So please join me in welcoming to the stage Congresswoman LaMonica McIver from the 10th Congressional District. Good morning. Good morning. Oh no, y'all gotta be more energized than that. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys feeling today? Good. Oh no, I don't need her like two goods. How are you feeling today? Good. All right, okay, I need that energy. I need y'all energy because y'all about way younger than me and I need all of the energy from y'all today to get through my day. It is such a pleasure to be here. I wanna thank you so much, Asada, for the warm introduction and thank you to the New Jersey Institute of Social Justice, to Governor Murphy and every organizer who helped put together today's event to bring attention to this important issue. It is wonderful to see so many young people here today energized about democracy. It is so good to see so many young people here today energized about democracy. So many young people through our council member for the day or if I'm traveling in my day to day talking to people about, uh, about politics, about elections, they always tell me, you know what? I don't do politics. Politics ain't my thing. Oh, I stay out of that. You know, I don't, I don't got no time for that. Every day, politics is doing you. Every day, no matter your age, no matter who you are, no matter the color of your skin, no matter your age, every day, politics is doing you. So, gotta start doing politics. Your commitment to empowering young voices in our democracy is not only commendable, but it's also essential for the future of our communities. Voting is really the corner, cornerstone of democracy. Elections, elections have the power to steer our entire society for better or for worse. So that's why it's important for us to do what? Exactly, all right, I, only hold, I heard, only heard three. I'm gonna start getting like a pastor in a, in a moment. If you don't hear a lot of amens, the pastor just keep going. So I'm gonna need y'all to yell back at me or I'm just gonna keep on going up here. Um, so. As we all know, elections are decided by those who vote. While national elections are absolutely critical, we have one coming up in a few weeks you may have heard something about, right? Anybody know how many days? Oh, okay, less than 30, I'll take that. I'll take that, all right, y'all up to par a little bit. Just in a couple of weeks, we have an election coming up where we're going to be deciding on who will be America's next president. And so we are running through, talking to many folks about the election, getting them pumped up and ready to go. And so that is why it's so important about you being here today about talking about democracy. As mentioned, prior to being elected to Congress, I'm two weeks on the job. Um, I was your Newark City Council president. And we made a lot of decisions around a lot of things here in our city. The decisions that the Newark City Council makes are very important. Um, we decide on things regarding funding, health resources, affordable housing, you name it, the list goes on and on. As mentioned last year, I had the opportunity to sponsor and champion this legislation to lower the voting age in school board elections in Newark. And I'm so proud and happy, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed, Ryan, that this April, 2025, you will be able to vote in your first school board election. 
This change is about giving young people the opportunity to engage with their community and make their voices heard in matters that directly impact their education and their future. It's a small but significant step in the right direction. Getting young people involved in the political process at an early age will benefit overall health of our civil discourse. In recent years, we've seen an erosion of trust in public institutions. Too often, people feel like decisions are being made by powerful forces who don't have their best interest at heart. I know, it can be, I know it can feel daunting. Many of us have been in situations where we feel our voices don't matter or the system is too big to change. But I'm here to tell you that together we can move mountains. As one of the youngest members of Congress and the youngest member from the New Jersey delegation, I know firsthand that bringing fresh perspective to our challenges can be just the thing needed to create, the, to create that often eludes us. By voting, you assert your right to participate in the decisions that shape your world. It is a civic duty. It is a privilege. Each election is an opportunity to change, to, a, a chance to voice your opinions to make your desires known. Don't let anyone, and I'm happy that Ryan brought it up a little bit about the testimony that we were having during the time of us passing this bill. There were a lot he, he was nice about it, but I can say it now, Madam Clerk, there were a lot of people that were getting up talking about you had no right to vote. Lots. Some, some uh, advocates, some activists saying that, you know, you just don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you're talking about um, in order to have the right to vote. And so don't let anyone convince you that your, vo that your vote does not count. That's what they want you to believe, that your vote doesn't matter, that you should stay home because it's a waste of your time. Each vote is the declaration of your values, your hopes, your vision for your community. As we look ahead, I urge each of you to become active participants in democracy. Talk to your peers, engage in discussions about the issues that matter, and most importantly, vote. Thank you for the time today. It is really warming. I feel, feel like this moment right now is a full circle moment for me because as many know, I got involved in politics at age 10. Um, I had a great teacher who was running for office at the time and taught us how to get civically involved and what it meant to be involved. So to be able to have this opportunity to sponsor and champion this legislation, to see it come into fruition, it is just full circle for me of why we have to engage our young people at an early age in the civic process. So. Godspeed to you all. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you who are able at the polls in April 2025. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you to the team. All right, another round of applause for Congresswoman MacGyver. Yeah, and uh, just so for, you, for those of you who don't know, there is a bill that's been introduced in the U.S. House of Congress that would lower the voting age, and it was in, it's sponsored by Representative Grace Meng from New York. So we hope Congresswoman MacGyver gets on that train when she gets when you know when Congress is back. All right, so. Now I'm excited to bring to the mo uh, excuse me to the podium our next special guest, New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy. Round of applause. Yeah, what a real treat. So as you may know, Governor Murphy has been a champion of many pro-democracy issues, including voter registration options, expanding jury service, and restoring the right to vote to people on parole and probation. And now he's putting his voice behind the reason why we're here today, to lower the voting age to 16 in school board elections. Governor Murphy has been passionate about this issue, he even mentioned in his State of the State address earlier this year, just one day before Nork passed its historic ordinance. And he's shown support for the young people involved in our campaign. And we know we can count on him to continue to champion this issue as we spread the groundbreaking movement throughout all of New Jersey. So please join me in welcoming Governor Murphy for some special remarks. Let's hear it one more time for Asata. 
What happened to La Monica? La Monica, that was awesome. I only caught the end of it. More on you in a moment, if I may. Um, again, I want to thank Asada for that very kind introduction, along with all of her colleagues at the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice for hosting this vitally important summit. I want to give a shout out to my dear friend Ryan Haygood and his senior staff, and his family, by the way, who are with him today, which is cool, members of the board. Uh, this is one of these uh, invitations that took me about a half a second to accept. And more on that in a second, and Asada kind of previewed some of this already. It is such a thrill, by the way, to be here on the Rutgers campus in Newark, a city that has long stood at the forefront of our movement to empower and mobilize the young voters of New Jersey, but more on that in a moment. And by the way, you all likely know this, this is the most diverse institution of higher education in the United States of America, right? And how cool is it to be in a building with Paul Robeson's name uh, on it? Uh, God rest his soul. I want to thank all of the tremendous leaders here today who are doing their part to ensure that New Jersey is home to the strongest and most vibrant democracy in the enti entire nation, starting with the woman you just heard from New Jersey's newest Congresswoman, LaMonica McIver. And LaMonica, yeah, you don't get that every day. LaMonica, your presence at today's summit is especially fitting because of last month, you are now the youngest person to represent the Great Garden State in Congress. Yeah. By the way, if that weren't enough, before that, you were also the youngest person ever elected to Newark's city council. So really, it's quite fitting because your story is proof that when young New Jerseyans are given a chance to lead, our entire state succeeds. God bless you and congratulations again. He's not here, but I want to thank, and I know he's coming in right after me, your extraordinary mayor, Raz J. Baraka, who's welcoming us to the Brick City today. If you have not read it, Mayor Baraka is the subject of a long-form profile in New Yorker magazine, which is stunning, and I think it's the longest profile in New Yorker magazine of a New Jersey elected official in a long, long time and it captures not just Raz's personal history, but the history of this extraordinary community. I want to, uh, again, thank the mayor, along with all of his fellow municipal leaders, including my friend right over there, Junius Williams, Newark's historian. Junius, bless you. I also want to thank all the organizations represented here today. Not a complete list, but Make the Road, NAACP Youth and College Division, the New Jersey Black Empowerment Coalition, the Andrew Goodman Foundation, and so many others, frankly, too many to name. But I do want to give an extra special shout out to a couple of groups and a few folks who have truly changed the game when it comes to youth voting rights in New Jersey. First, the wonderful leaders with the GEM Project. And in particular, its founder and CEO, Amanda Ibacosia, along with Where's Amanda? Is she here? Not yet, she's coming. Please tell her I said nice things about her. <laughs> Along with two of the GEM Project's fellows in Newark's very own, Brianna Campbell. Yeah, is Brianna here? Right there, Brianna, I love you. Uh, and Nathaniel Esibunteng. Is Nathaniel here? Right behind you, love you both. Uh, as you all know better than I, Brianna, Nathaniel, and their team at the GEM Project played a leading role in scoring a major victory for our state's democracy just earlier this year, when Newark became the largest community in the United States of America to expand voting rights, rights to younger Americans in more than a half a century. And if that weren't enough, alongside of them, someone else who has taken the baton from the GEM Project, who is fighting to expand voting rights to young New Jerseyans, and in every, not just in Newark, but in every corner of the state, Anjali Krishnamurti. Is Anjali here? Right in front of me, Anjali. We were all together a couple of days ago at Hoboken High singing, singing the same tune, but Anjali, it's great to see you again. Uh, you are the co-founder and co-executive director of Vote16NJ, 
which is affiliated with Vote 16 USA. I'm told the director, Lawan Allen, is with us. Lawan, God bless you, honored. Great to have you in the, in the Brick City, in the Garden State, uh, and to each and every one of you. So last year, when I first learned about Anjali, as well as her fellow Vote 16 NJ co-founder, Yen J. Hu. Yen J. is not here, is that right? Please give him a hug for me when you see him. Uh, when, I heard, when I learned about them and their mission to secure voting rights for 16 and 17-year-olds in New Jersey, I was immediately intrigued. Because I can tell you from personal experience, it is no small feat to organize a political movement with either a citywide or a statewide reach. And that is especially true when it is a movement that has been mobilized to enact a proposal that no other state has ever enacted. New Jersey would be the first in the nation to take this step. But Anjali and Yenje, as well as Brianna and Nathaniel and every advocate supporting this movement, were not daunted by that challenge, either in Newark or around the state. Instead, they sensed an opportunity to strengthen New Jersey's democracy. And they have seized that opportunity with pluck and determination. And that is because they believe that encouraging young New Jerseyans to participate in our political process is really about investing in the long-term health of our democracy. It is about empowering our young neighbors to take control over their own futures. And as the father of four, I agree wholeheartedly. This mission is of monumental importance for all of us and to me personally. And that's exactly why earlier this year, uh, as uh, was mentioned during my annual State of the State address with Anjali and Yenje right with me, I called upon our state legislature to pass this legislation this year so we can expand voting rights in local school board elections to every 16 and 17 year old in New Jersey. And I wanna acknowledge all of the lawmakers, I don't think any of them are with us this morning, but in absentia, acknowledge them who have now been leading the charge on our behalf to turn this legislation into law. They include Senators Raj Mukherjee, Brian Stack, and Andrew Zwicker, and Assemblywoman Newark's own Cleopatra Tucker, Verlina Reynolds-Jackson, Jessica Ramirez, Shama Hader, Garnet Hall, and Assemblyman Chris Tully. I am incredibly grateful for their courageous leadership. As I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, a bunch of us, including Raj and Cleo, were together at Hoboken High earlier this week singing the same uh, uh, song. So let's be also clear about this, and Ryan and I were talking about this before I came up here. They cannot win this fight on their own, which is why we all need to speak up and encourage their colleagues in the state legislature to join them in supporting this measure. It's an interesting thing. It's got a lot of people who would normally be staunch allies a little bit nervous. A municipal chair reached out to me a couple of days ago on Thursday and said, you know what? I'm a little nervous allowing folks as young as 16 and 17 to have their voice. And again, this is someone who's an ally in the cause for not just me, but for all of us. So that, that gives you an idea. This is not going to be an easy mountain to scale to get that law uh, passed and on my desk. And by the way, when it does get there, I will be thrilled to sign it into law. Now, there is a simple reason why I have spoken so forcefully in support of this proposal. It is because young students, like many of you here today, are the future of New Jersey. And you deserve the right to shape your future instead of leaving it exclusively in the hands of previous generations of leaders like yours truly. And that is all the more important when you consider the state of our world today. You and your peers are inheriting a planet that not only seems to be growing more complicated and more confusing by the day, from COVID to climate change to two full-on wars, the times we are living in are anything but ordinary. But dis despite the scope and scale of the challenges we face, the truth is I have never been more optimistic about our nation's future than I am today. And that is precisely because of students and young leaders like you. Each one of you is a part of a generation that is more educated, more compassionate, and more engaged than perhaps any other generation in human history. 
And as the future leaders of our state, and I might add of our nation, we the leaders of today need to set each of you up to succeed any way we can. And that means, among other things, giving you the power early on in life to shape our political system at the most fundamental level, including your local school boards, which directly inform the day-to-day -day lives of our state students. But just as importantly, fighting for youth voting rights is also about encouraging our young neighbors to become lifelong voters. Because we know that when someone votes in one election, they are far more likely to turn out and vote in the next election. This directs, directly builds what some folks would call muscle memory. So with your continued advocacy and with this legislation, we can ensure that New Jersey's democracy is stronger and more accessible than that of any other state in our country. And truth be told, building a stronger, healthier democracy for New Jersey has been one of our administration's highest priorities since the very beginning. In fact, over the past now almost seven years, and Asada referred to some of this, we have been proud to work alongside the New Jersey Institute of Social Justice, as well as many of the organizations represented here today, to both protect and expand voting rights in the Garden State. Together, we have enacted new online and automatic voter registration laws. We've made it easier than ever before for New Jerseyans to vote early, whether in person or by mail. We've expanded the right to vote to 17-year-olds in primary elections if they will be 18 by the time of the general election. And again, as Asada referred to this, and I think most profoundly, we have also restored voting rights to more than 80,000 New Jerseyans on either parole or probation. So all together, and I might add under the exceptional leadership of the Lieutenant Governor and Secretary of State from day one, and you all know this, but the Secretary of State oversees all of our elections, Tahisha Way, uh, and by the way, alongside the Institute, Ryan, and so many other like-minded organizations, we have helped more New Jerseyans than ever access the ballot box. And of course, Tahisha stepped into the enormous shoes of the late, great Lieutenant Governor Sheila Y. Oliver before her, Newark's own. Let's hear it for Sheila. So all of us together have welcomed a historic number of new voices to the chorus of our state's democracy, and that is an accomplishment we all wear as a badge of honor. And let me just say emphatically, we are not done. So as we continue to move forward, I'm counting on each one of you to work with us in taking perhaps our boldest step yet by allowing young New Jerseyans to add their voices to the chorus of democracy as well. And once I sign this legislation into law, each one of you will be able to say that you played a part in making New Jersey the first state in the entire nation to secure voting rights for Americans as young as 16-year-olds. It will be an historic accomplishment that began right here in Newark, thanks to the leadership of emerging visionaries like Brianna and Nathaniel and their colleagues. And it will be yet another reason that we can proudly shout to anyone who will listen that we're from Jersey, baby, and you're not. <laughs> so, just had to sneak that in. So before I wrap things up, I do have one final request. We have 30 days to go to the most consequential election of not just your lifetime, but of my lifetime as well. And given the fact that I'm joining you today in my official capacity as governor, I will refra refrain from speaking about my own preference in this year's presidential election, but you can imagine what that is. But I will say this, the conventional wisdom in our political discourse is that young voters under the age of 25 typically do not vote at the level they need to. And as a result, there are politicians out there who believe they can ignore the concerns of younger voters without facing any consequences. So today, in addition to asking each of you to turn out and do your part in this election, I want to ask you to encourage your friends and your peers to turn out and vote as well, particularly those who you know may not have voted in the past. With this year's election, 
You, the young voters of America, have a chance to prove that you're not only paying attention, but that your voices and your needs cannot be ignored. You have a chance to force our elected officials to address the issues that are most important to you, whether it be voting rights or climate change or foreign affairs or anything else. With this election, you and your peers have a, change, a chance to change the course of our nation's history and the history of the world for the better. Four years ago, and this is a good thing, in the 2020 election, New Jersey saw the highest youth turnout of any state in the nation. And now we have to prove that New Jersey will always be number one for youth turnout in this election and in every election to come. That 2020 was not a fluke. It was the beginning of a trend with Jersey at the top of the list. So please, if you have any questions at all about how you could participate in next month's election, I encourage you to visit a website that was set up for that very purpose, vote.nj.gov, vote.nj.gov. And make sure you and your friends are registered to vote and be sure to make a plan to vote, whether by mail or in person. I'll be voting on the first day of early voting, three weeks from today, October 26th, and that will run all over the state through Sunday, November 3rd. We take a day off on the 4th to reset the machines, and then game day is on Tuesday, November 5th. With this election, I don't say this lightly, and for every election yet to come, the future is literally in your hands, and I'm honored to count myself as a partner in ensuring that young New Jerseyans like you can shape that future for the better. Ryan, two other final quick thoughts. Number one, you may say, and it's a legitimate, Monica, you and I have talked about this, I think Jersey is safe for Kamala Harris. We take nothing for granted, but Jersey's safe. But I just came from Montclair, uh, where every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, a bunch of buses get filled up and go to Pennsylvania. I hosted a debate party the other night for the vice presidential debate. Pennsylvania is on the knife's edge. And I think of the seven or eight battleground states that are out there, Pennsylvania is the most important. We get Pennsylvania right, I think we win the election. So if you can, I think you have to be 18 to do this, but I'm not sure. But if you can and you're interested, Montclair, Lackawanna Plaza, every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock from now till Election Day, they're sending buses over to PA. I encourage you to join. And the second reason why it's important to vote, not only to get Kamala Harris and Tim Walsh over the goal line, we're hosting Kamala's husband, Doug, uh, Doug Emhoff, tonight to raise a bunch of money. That's another thing that New Jersey exports. We don't not only export boots on the ground uh, and surrogating, as I do, but also money. But there are huge down-ballot consequences. Huge down-ballot consequences. I think LaMonica and Ryan will agree with me. Look at the 7th uh, Congressional District. Sue Altman has a real shot to win that election. If you're in that district, or if you have friends in that district, or if you want to go in and knock on doors, you can go to Pennsylvania, but you can also go to New Jersey 7th. And we have a chance to take a seat back from the other side, and in doing so, we advance our cause meaningfully that will take the entire House of Representatives back. God bless you all, and thank you so much for having me. As Governor Murphy mentioned earlier, in a, reason, uh, excuse me, a recently published New Yorker article, Mayor Roz Baraka is described as a reasonable radical. Well, we look at our Vote 16 campaign that way too. Democracy is radical and powerful. It, and we need to experiment and be in, co in constant vigilance. Excuse me. Including our young people in our democracy is eminently reasonable. Why silence the voices of those most directly impacted by school board decisions? So it's no surprise that Mayor Baraka is a champion of this movement to lower the voting age and that his city, Newark, the Brick City, was the first in New Jersey to take this powerful step. So please give me a, round, a, a big round of applause and help me welcome to the stage Mayor Roz J. Baraka. She don't want to sit down, all right. <laughs> and neither do he, obviously. But uh, I wanted to say thank you uh, to New Jersey Institute for Social Justice, 
to uh, all of you young people that are here today and everybody that helped organize this. Uh, my congresswoman is not here today, who was the council president then, LaMonica MacGyver, who helped shepherd this through the municipal council to make this a reality here uh, in the city of Newark. I appreciate it, and I, and I want you to know how important it really, really is, and I don't know if people understand that, and there's considerable pushback, by the way. Uh, you would think it wouldn't be, but uh, there is, and was, I'm happy to see that Governor Murphy was here supporting this concept, this idea uh, about what happens. Around the country, people are stealing people's right to vote. They're, they're actually dropping people from the rolls uh, in places uh, like Mississippi, like Georgia, like Alabama. They, they're dropping tens and thousands of people from the voting rolls, people who uh, registered to vote lawfully, who are able to vote and should be voting and should be engaged. They're dropping people uh, from, the vote, from the voter rolls. But in New Jersey, we're adding more people, right? And that's incredible. Uh, it is a, a dichotomy that, you know, it, should be, it shouldn't be as stark as it is, but it is. You watch what's happening around the country and what's happening in New Jersey. There's some incredibly different things happening, not just because of legislators and elected officials that are in, in office, but because of people like you who are pushing the envelope on the ground, forcing us and making us to do these things. I was at an event uh, last week, and uh, an older woman got up and said, you know, young people don't take the vote seriously. She said when she was younger, her mother dressed them all up in their Sunday best, and she took them to go vote. When she voted, they went in the polls with her, and, and she voted just so they could see how important this was. And she said, since that time, I always think of voting as something like incredibly important, because I remember in my mind my mama dressing us up and taking us to the polls to getting us to vote. And that was probably because then, at that time, that she was talking about the, the proximity to uh, you not being able to vote by law and, and the fight that it took to be able to get to vote was very, very, very close, right? So to, to, to folks then, it was so uh, paramount, so important, so significant that they get out and vote because they were voting for things or making sure that not only did they, they wanted to show self-determination, but they were voting to prevent harm from themselves. They were voting so, they not, so, so lynching could be illegal. They were voting so voting rights could be uh, you know, given to everyone, so the economy uh, could visit everybody's household, so, so Jim Crow could be destroyed, right? They were voting because people were preventing them from voting because people were getting shot uh, on, on, on city hall steps in order to try to vote. Dogs were being sicked on people at the Edmund Pettus Bridge because people were trying to vote. So to those folks then, it was uh, you know, a lot more critical in their mind uh, to get out and vote. 16, 17, 18 year olds will climb the fence of high schools to get out of the high school while they're supposed to be in schools just to march downtown in order so people can have the right to vote today. So there are many people who are voting today because of 16, 17, and 18 year olds climbed fences of schools to protest so they could actually vote who are now in the way of allowing 16 and 17 year olds to vote. So that, that, that in and of itself is, 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 is very you know, serious, but what's more important is you know, the things that are important to you, uh, that we make decisions about every day, the books you read, the curriculum that's in your classroom, whether books should be banned or not, right? The cultural relevance uh, that's accessible uh, in the curriculum, right? The type of teachers that, you, that are put before you, the, the principles that school boards hire, or, or the, the contracts that go outside of your community to other people that don't empower, employ, uh, uh, direct funding resources to people in your neighborhood, create jobs and opportunity. All of those things affect you. School lunch, which everybody talks about all the time, right? School lunch, all of these things that, that you talk about all day in class or in the hallway that most of us don't pay attention to, uh, or, or really take serious enough, it's important for you to, to, to get your, your voice heard in that. But more importantly, I, I hope this is a dress rehearsal before I sit down. I hope this is a dress rehearsal. Hope this is an opportunity for you to get the practice of voting, that it becomes infectious and habitual, that you begin to keep doing it over and over and over again, like that kid, the mother who told me that her kids were dressed, that she was dressed up as a kid. Hopefully this is your dress up. 
This is your dress rehearsal to continue to vote always and to encourage other people to vote. I mean, so voting by itself is not enough, but it's the easiest thing you can do to involve yourself in democracy. It is the easiest thing you can do to make sure your voice, your concerns are heard. It's the easiest thing to do. Get up in the morning, go down there, pull that lever, push the button, write it on. You can even sit in your house these days and, and mail it in. So that's the easiest thing you can do to participate in democracy. It's not the only thing you can do, but it's certainly the easiest thing you can do. I want to say congratulations to all of you in the state of New Jersey who are going to pull that lever, particularly in April here in the city of Newark during the school board race. I look forward to seeing the plurality that you guys create uh, because you came out to vote. Probably be more of you voting than, than some of the residents of, of, of the neighborhood. So you have a real opportunity to be a sway, a swing vote here in the city of Newark. So I would say get together, organize yourself, pick a candidate, and make sure that candidate win, then celebrate like heaven to make sure everybody knows that they won because you voted. God bless you.